So there we go again for game number two. Relax versus Michi Makers. Michi Makers took the first game, even though Relax had a wombo combo super draft, in my opinion. But, well, they didn't get it through. To be honest, their setup all over the lane was just not effective enough against Michi Makers. They got pickoffs everywhere. And Relax just missed the point to join 5-on-5 five five fights, even with the relocate and also the global presence by Keeper of the Light, especially when the Keeper of Light was... Uh, the first one that got the pick off so it didn't work out for them it's kinda sad to be honest because I wanted this draft to work but yeah meet your makers they found their rhythm nice farm nice pick offs nice plays coming out and well deserved win but this is a two game series that means we have another chance for relax to get a point here on their score either way we are Hafla TV my name is Hafla Moog and coming with me is of course Coucher and yep, if you like what you see, what you hear, then follow us on Twitch, on Facebook and Twitter. You always get the news. And if you miss the games, especially with the amazing draft last game, then you can just hop on our YouTube and watch it anytime. Everything we stream is uploaded within an hour after um, the actual stream. So let's hop into the draft. Yeah, relax. I think they should go back to <laughs> what they know best, probably. That wasn't the kind of draft that I saw them users versus TCN. It was kind of experimental. Maybe they've used it in practice games or something. <laughs> but Meteor Makers... out of DK and Fnatic, to be honest. <laughs> well, yeah, more or less. Actually, well, IO Tiny, it's something that the Power Rangers have also started playing. So maybe they're the practice partners for Relax every now and then, because I guess they are at the Tier 2 teams both, more or less. But yeah, I'm hoping to see a more Relax-esque <laughs> lineup. Relaxed? <laughs> no, it's like the type of, or as they go, usually re relaxesque or however you say it. Relaxish? <laughs> yeah, relaxish, I guess so. They go for an invoker, so a really solid pickup already. But Meteor Makers now, Center War Runner is available as Easter Tazzle or the Shadow Shaman. But they go for the Shadow Demon and the Centaur instead. Yeah, pretty solid. And by the way, both teams are on a heavy time pressure here. This has to be a fast game. So, because I think Relax is playing in the D2CL pretty soon, they play versus Alliance. So, like, they really want to hurry with this game. They have to go for a fast draft. I mean, it's it's pretty much their fault that, like, last game lasted so long because they had a turtle strategy. Kind of failed to turtle, to be honest, but still, like, they dragged it out much, much longer than it had to be. Even with the 20k experience and gold lead for Michi Makers, they held on in hope they could still win the game. I mean, the spirit and the attitude is correct, of course, but I mean, maybe they should have called it earlier after it failed and then go for a fast game too, in hope to win that. Because for D2CL, they have to be ready. There are strict rules. They said it in the lobby even if you're 15 minutes late, you get a default loss. And this is, of course, then bad for Relax because playing against Alliance is something you shouldn't miss. Either way, Draft, we already said this, Ember, Mirana, Lycan and Batrider is out and Shadow Demon, Center Warren are now here being picked up. So very nice combination. It's not as strong as, of course, the Mirana, Shadow Demon combination, but still Disruption and the Soul Catcher into the Hoofstomp double edge. That's a lot of damage for Relax now. They get the Invoker up, of course. And, yep, Dazzle is the second one. The Dazzle is really good against first type of heroes like the Centaur. Chest can keep the target of focus alive with the shallow grave, of course, with the heals. But well, I thought that for a moment that relax. Maybe they're going for some type of push, getting a shadow shaman for themselves. Maybe they can still go for it because the dazzle he keeps the creep waves alive at least. Yeah. Can still go for a jungler or something of the sort as well. But maybe the invoker is going for Vex instead of Exhort, yeah. so not going for that much push. But Quas Vex has. Every much a bit of an impact as an Exhort does. To be honest, I love the Exhort Invoker when you have Shadow Demon on the other team because Defensive Disruption is also a perfect setup. Usually we see the setup like Exhort Invoker and Shadow Demon in one team, so you have Disruption Soul Catcher and when you get out of this Disruption you get directly a Sun Strike on top of your head. But if he's in the other team, this is also a perfect setup. Sometimes you just try to rescue someone with a disruption. If Invoker is still alive, no matter where he is on the map, he might as well just get the last hit there, kill secured by the help of your enemy. That's what I like the most to see, and it's always funny. Either way, the second ban rotation is now coming up. And yeah, Michi Makers with super fast picks. Now they actually take a bit of time. Nyx, Luna is out for relax. And on the other side, Michi Makers, they don't want to play against the Train Protector. 
Um, which is, I guess, good because last game, just imagine, they didn't commit too much to the towers, they did step-by-step -step damage. Just imagine that would have been, I don't know, for example, a Dream Protector instead of the Keeper of the Light. That would have been a definite, or like even a Dream Protector instead of uh, Shaflo on the, on the uh, Bounty Hunter. So they could have protected their towers for even longer, that would have been probably a 60 minutes game or something, because, I mean, after all, the bounty hunter didn't have too much impact anyway. But they ban out the axe, so no axe for Shachlo, this is, yeah, I said it with a tear in my eye, because I wanted to see axe on Shachlo, so far he always managed to amaze me. But now, this is gonna be another interesting game, since we see... Skyrath Mage coming out from Meteor Makers, so both teams coming up with exotic drafts today. Yeah, the Skyrath. <laughs> I mean, that's the first time I've been able to cast that here at least. I think I saw one other game, it got picked up after 6.81. Don't think it was successful though, so hoping Meteor Makers can prove me wrong. And to be honest, if the center jumps in, gets the hoop stomp, and the Mystic Flare is on top of that, that's just so much magic burst damage that even if there's a Shallow Grave, he's still going to be reduced to at least 1 HP. And once the Shallow Grave ends, most likely will get ticked off maybe by something like the Shadow Poison from the Shadow Demon. Yeah, I guess that would... Yep, yeah, it's, it's not too bad after all. Also, well, Shadow Demon Disruption, Scarif uh, Ultimate on top, also a nice combination if you get out there with the Soul Catcher. Hmm... Yep, I guess it could work. To be honest, like, it, w what were the changes? Are there changes in 6.81 on the Skyrath match? I have to admit, I don't know because... Yeah, like, there are. He got the extra movement speed. He's up from 350 to 325. Yeah. As well as his concussive shot damage is increased yeah, by yeah. 10 every level. So it was, used to be 50, 100, and so on. Now it's 60, 120, and ends up at... 240. But it's still, it's not too much of a buff to be honest, but I mean... Yeah, the movement speed is the most important, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But Relax is going for a lone druid, so we're gonna see a tanky bear coming out here. And I guess, yeah, well, the bear is not too bad actually, because we have already two squishy heroes on the side of Meteor Maker Stab with uh, the Shadow Demon and Skyrath Match. Uh, entangle on those heroes and Radiance Burn, this is definitely something you don't want to see. Plus, of course, the bear scouting ahead of fights whatsoever, interrupting also with the Radiance, blink initiations like from the center Warner. So, yeah, the Lone Druid, not a bad pick up here, I think. Yeah, the Lone Druid is really good against Burst because he's just so damn tanky in his true form. Before that, of course, he can still get picked off, and depending on where Relax want to lane him, he actually might die a lot. I mean, as far as offlane Lone Druid goes, the bear is really good in just pulling it. But Meteor Makers, they pick up the Life Stealer, and either they're gonna go for a Life Stealer tri lane with the center offlane, or actually they might try to pair up the Life Stealer against the Lone Druid because actually that's a pretty decent matchup for the Life Stealer. Yeah. Because you can just munch away at the bear with the feast. Yep, I guess. I would like to see a vassal for the Life Stealer, as in like a mid hero, a Storm Spirit, for example, or a Puck. So he can actually go for the infest bomb. By the way, Lifestealer, I'm always glad to see him because he's getting so... I don't know, like nobody is picking up Lifestealer anymore and I like the hero... They're all waiting for the new ESL... Was it ESL1 Compendium set uh, for the Lifestealer? Yeah, the, the, the set coming <laughs> for It looks ugly as hell, man. <laughs> I don't know why everybody's so hyped up, up about it. Well, there is already the Ravenous set out for the Lifestealer, that doesn't look too bad, but let's not go for the cosmetics now. Naga Siren is picked up uh, by Relax, so that is... is this a carry uh, Naga? I don't think so. This is support Naga. It has to be. Because a Naga without Radiance, or a Bear without Radiance, and Double Radiance, uh, that's very unlikely, so we're gonna see a support Naga coming out here. Well, I guess it's decent enough just going for the Ensnare against the Lifestealer. Yep, or one definitely. at least. So the ensnare through the rage, of course, that definitely helps. And actually, the riptide makes the bear hurt more as well, I guess. Yeah, of course, it's it's physical damage, so that definitely helps. Plus, of course, the ensnare gives the bear a lot of like additional chances to get actually entangled. So you have quite a lockdown there. You already have a slow by the dazzle. You have the entangle of the bear, and of course, the ensnare riptide helping to amplify the damage. Plus, of course, making sure that the entangle actually happens. Also, life stealer can't really do much. Uh, against a bear that is just nagging on you because it's too much HP to actually munch through and well so you are pretty much stuck in place if the bear is lucky with his entangles 
Yeah, Meteor Makers, they banned out a Razor, so I'm calling Templar Assassin for Meteor Makers mid lane. Yep, okay. That would be actually interesting. Like, both teams now use up quite of their bonus time, relax, also considering quite something for the last pick. But to be honest, I think that you can't effectively ban anything now because you have a Lifestealer. I already talked about it, that there is co probably coming something uh, that might be a vessel for the Lifestealer Infest Bomb. So if they want to, there's still a Puck, there's still a Storm Spirit available, or maybe they don't f go for this at all. So to be honest, you can go for any ban here. I don't think you're going to hit the blink right TA, one. Blink TA, man. It's going to be Blink TA. <laughs> blink TA with the Infest Bomb inside. <laughs> Yeah, they don't even need the infest. It can be used for that as with the center as well. But already the psionic traps with the slow will help <laughs> with the life steer chest being able to stay on top of his targets. Yeah. And of course, it's a pretty nice matchup against the invoker as well as with the meld. They're on the dire side, early Roche and just mowing down the spirit pair of the lone druid as well with the minus armor and physical damage. Yep, I guess. So well, now it's about the fifth picks, and now. I already talked about it when it was time for the fifth ban, but like I still vote for Storm Spirit or Puck. Like that would be just perfect. I mean the Skyrath Mage of course in a support position, the Lifestealer farming in a try lane, and then Storm Spirit or Puck in the mid, then later being a vassal for Lifestealer. This would be for me optimum and I think also that Michi Makers like think about it. But now they only got uh, about yeah, now ten seconds time to decide this. So what no, are they gonna draft? Okay, I'm I'm totally wrong. What the hell man? Yeah. I'm this sucks. <laughs> this draft sucks. Yeah. Well, no, it's pretty nice with the Darkshare vacuuming up, followed by the center hoof stomp, followed by the Mystic Flare of the Sky Wrath. Well, so, I, I really wish they just had more to go with the Darkshare. And I really am afraid that the Lone Druid might be too much for Meteor Makers to handle if they get past a certain point. Yeah, I'm, I'm also afraid. Like, this life sealer as a single core with proper damage, the rest is pretty much magical damage, of course, except for the center war runner. But, like, he also is easily uh, disabled. Like, if this game goes late, I don't see a single chance for Meteor Makers, I have to be honest with you. And now comes, on top of all of that, there comes the silence out in form of a puck. That means if the puck lands a proper initiation, you have no defensive disruption, you have no magical damage coming out by the Skyrath match, maybe even the Darkseer held in place, no way that he can actually uh, sprint away. So, draft-wise, again, just like game one, I give Relax the upper hand here, but in game one, they convinced me otherwise. I mean, game one, solid play by Meteor Makers, and even against this Wombo Combo draft, uh, Meteor Makers won their first game. So, let's see how this one goes. Man, I really, I really think that TA would have raped this game. <laughs> TA? Yeah. Oh, but also TA against the bear and the radiance coming out. Your reflections would be so fast. And you won't even get the radiance, man. You're just gonna kill him before. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you're a bit overexcited over TA. <laughs> and that here is so strong. At least with the life there, just the psionic trap slow. It's so good. Yep, but it needs so much. It needs so much snowballing at the start. But either way, this time there's no pauses coming. Let's hope uh, we keep it that way. I'm gonna introduce Mitchu Makers this time here on the dire side. Ace is gonna play the center warner, followed by Rice on the dark seer. Uh, Unicorn on the Shadow Demon, Crit playing the Skyrath Mage, and the last one who's already rushing into the jungle is Link here on the Lifestealer. And for Relax, on the Radiant side, Tame My Wild, also known as Crazy, will be taking up the mid lane Invoker as Windex together with Yoki heading towards the top lane for the time being. Windex, of course, on the Dazzle Yoki, on the Puck, and bottom lane, Dread will be playing the supposedly support Naga Siren with Shahlo up on the Lone Druid. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, Shachlo, this is the first time, and we cast Relax a lot, like we, uh, for those who might see us now the second time here of, for example, the Russian people, we also casted uh, Star Letter Pro Series and Semi Series, so there we also had the chance of, uh, like, meeting a lot of Russian teams, and also in GDL we met Relax a lot of times. It's the first time I actually see him on a Lone Druid, so I'm kind of excited to see Shachlo playing that Lone Druid and how he does it. Either way, like, ward-wise, there's just one coming out here, in the mid, of course, giving vision against the side rotations, but there's nothing else so far coming out. Naga doesn't have a ward, Laundry doesn't have a ward, so all the wards are going in the top lane. Like, Dazzle has still his Observer ward and two sentries in place. Now, Unicorn scouting for the rune, but he won't be successful finding it because it's 
bottom and Dread on the Naga is getting it. Yeah, it looks like Mutual Maker started running maybe a sort of a dual lane on this bottom or no, Unicorn rotating in as well, maybe. Don't even know what they're gonna do. Are they gonna do Shadow Demon Centaur mid lane? Yep. Uh why not? Like it's it's perfect. Like crazy crazy can't go in here. Otherwise he will get disrupted and then he has all uh, the damage in his face directly by the combo we already mentioned in the draft that would be hoof stomp double edge plus of course the soul catcher amplifying that damage that is just sick but here top oh. already have to go yeah rising yeah. huge trouble poison touches there as well he's not level two he goes for the iron shell he can't run anywhere and he's just gonna feed away the first blood by the looks of it and yeah that's gonna be the first blood as well windex gets it with the poison touch damage yep that was absolutely the wrong skill this is why you don't pick up a skill before you actually see your lane now here in the bottom lane we see a lot of harass on the bear, but of course relax, this time having a nice start with the first blood uh, in their way. So yep, yeah, the dark seer, that was pretty much the wrong skill. Now he's level 2, he has surge of course, and yeah, with the surge he would have survived any time. He was really expecting to go up against the puck solo, but really nice rotations by Windex there, heads up play by them, relax just. Getting off to a good start already, and that's exactly what they need. Especially as Meteor Makers, they have the lineup that needs to hold the momentum. Yep, and at the moment, Crazy in, in the mid is getting some CS. This is, well, and the logical conclusion comes here. Wind Axe now in the mid as well. I mean, they got the advantage now over the Darkseer in the top lane, of course, and now he can just help the Invoker to get the farm because the Exod Invoker, he needs a lot of XP to get online. We're probably gonna see a Midas rush. Uh, on him, maybe, I guess, I just assume it now because that's like the most common build. Now actually Wind Axe picking up a haste rune. This haste rune used against the Darks here, that could be dangerous. Puck, well, he has the Illusionary Orb level 2. If that hits, that's a lot of damage and now we see the orb doesn't hit, but they go for it. Yeah, he has the surge though and he will be safe. The Shadow Wave, I think it missed as well, but Windex wants to go for extra rest. Just to make sure Rice uses as much consumables as possible. Yep, this orb needed to hit. The orb definitely needed to hit. Then it might have been close and worth to dive even the tower. But like with the orb not hitting the darks here, then there was just too much HP left to be dived for. But either way, here in the bot lane, how does it look? I mean, 12-1 at the moment on the Nyx. Uh The Skyref just sticks around in the background. He got two denies, but the bear... Well, 9-1, so that's not too much of a difference. Also, they don't get too much um, damage into the bear. The, I mean, of course, killing the bear was always nice. The additional gold. Is it 250, 300 now? 250, right? It should be 300, I think. 300 now, yeah. But either way, so yeah, it's definitely worth to go for bear kills if you can. But the problem is they can't really do it. I mean, they have level 1 open wounds. Maybe here and there some harass damage. The Skyrath mage could contribute to it, but still not enough. Like, the bear has to be like at one third or even lower. Um, I don't think it will work. So let's see what's going on. Naik so far taking the lead in the CS, so he will definitely get some nice farm till the bear gets actually scary. Yeah, before the uh, entangling clause comes out, life there doesn't really have to worry too much about anything. Maybe with the orb of venom there as well, but that's not picked up yet, so he's going to be fine for the time being. And it looks like top lane Rice taking heavy harassment from Yoki Solo now. That first blood, yep. top lane, it helped him out so much. Yep. It's also a nice aggressive play by Yoki. Like, I mean, the Darks here, who's working with a Soul Ring, he's constantly losing HP and regening less back. And that means, well, he can actually go for some harass damage. Also, the level 3 orb, plus now waning rift level 1, that's a lot of damage coming his way. Just, oh, just but Unicorn is smoked up. They want to go for the lone druid. If they get the disruption, that might be the perfect setup. There's the soul catcher on top link. Has the open wounds for the slow. They go for it as well. Crit going in with his magic burst. Yep, no way. But at the same time, Puck is diving the darks here. I wasn't sure which one to show, but I did it in the correct direction. The lone druid dying one second before the darks here does. So, yeah, what I showed or before on Yoki, the harass damage on the darks here actually ended up in a kill. So I actually got both on the camera. I'm so proud of myself at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well, well done. done. <laughs> Pat yourself way. on the back. Yeah, relax. I mean, relax getting a kill. The puck is definitely having some snowball potential here, but the lone druid is, of course, a key hero, and he might again be in trouble. Yeah, well, they might catch Dread instead. Oh, Unicorn. 
Coming up from the side, gives the disruption to the soul catcher. Will it hit the correct target? He goes for it and Dread gets caught. There's the burst damage, of course, by crit and easy last right click. Unicorn gets the kill. Yep, absolutely easy kill on Dread. And that makes it two for two in five minutes. So four kills in five minutes. So far, a relatively slow game. But I mean, after the fast first blood, um, that's mostly the case that teams are just, you know, a bit reluctant to go out whatsoever. But now, like, Meteor Maker is pretty much secure. Uh, their try lane while the puck is winning his lane and now that also the, the supports rotated away from the mid lane also the center not getting too much anymore the invoker actually took the lead here we have 16 uh, 60 19 oh my god he's getting like every damn deny <laughs> and the centaur just 13 14 it's pretty funny because both mid heroes at the moment have more denies than last heads yeah, that's... <laughs> the knives are so much more fun and somehow easier to get as well. Doesn't make any sense, but it it is like that, to be honest. But at least the Shadow Demon has come back towards the mid lane to help Ace out on the Centaur. But, oh, he actually goes away. There's the Poison Touch. They used the Cold Snap already. Ace takes some harassment. He's going to be fine. He has the bottle as well, and he's rather tanky. But Unicorn with the double damage, he's rotating towards the top side. But Puck has a Dream Coil. Of course, level 4, Illusion Orb. And Unicorn does he really want to go for it. the Soul Catcher? The right clicks are there. He touches one with the face shift. Uh, oh, he, he will definitely get slow. get away here because he also has the Dream Coil, just an emergency situation. So it's it's like fair. more interesting is now Link here on the run for Dread. Dread yeah, can't they have the ensnare though. It's level one, so Link. I don't think he can catch up. But the Arcane Bolt, the concussive shot rather. There's the Arcane Bolt flying out as well, and Dread will go down. Yep. Crit. Easy level three kill. Arcane Bolt. That's a problem with the Naga, but oh my god, Yoki here, top, absolutely in what? problem. Oh my god, the Tox here, hit. the last hit with the wall. Of course, if you get the wall on your head, that must hurt. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, so Yoki going down, giving away, was it already a killing spree? No, it was not. He was one, actually one kill away from a killing spree, but still, so the Darks here actually getting revenge on his lane, and suddenly it is too... For, I mean, the kill on Dread, okay, that's a support down, and Link just getting a bit fat there. But now this kill on the puck, that was really important for Relax. Then again, oh, here they the want to go. There's the <laughs> Sun Strike onto Crit, he's dropping solo. Dread get cut, can it up. There's the open wounds for nothing, pretty much. But they all escape for the time being. Link on the run as well, really low on mana. We'll escape. The Sun Strike did so much damage, but really yeah. lackluster follow up there. This is three points, Axord, level six Invoker, so. Yeah, it already starts to hurt, especially on a hero like Skyrath Mage. And to be honest, he has a second go on a Sun Strike. Well, Sun Strike is three seconds. No, actually, he reached. He has a Dream Coil as well. Oh, Link escape! Oh, the Ensnare was just about to come out by Dread. That was so damn close. Too close for comfort. And Link now, he's tanking up the right clicks from Yoki. There's the Dream Coil as well. Will they go for more? No mana for Rage, no mana for nothing. Poison Touch is there. Sun Strike oh, gonna Sun come out. Thank yeah. God. It actually is. Beautifully done. He was just pretty much running around the same spot. They didn't even try to dodge by the looks of it. Yeah, but I think this time they do the right decision because we had the same in last last game. They got the pickoffs when they were alone and now they are like, hey guys, we're getting picked off when we're alone, so let's just stick together. Now we see four of them here in the lane. They get properly healed. The bank tanks, uh, the bear, the bank, the bank, <laughs> bear and tank. The bear tanks the tower, also called the banker, is tanking the tower either way. Um, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> well, we have one more after this. <laughs> oh, true, okay. But, uh, crazy now, only Invoker has his Hand of Midas finished up. We'll get it just before 9 minutes, so... Not too bad, we'll get that extra XP, maybe get that early Necro book that usually extra Invokers go for. And actually, Windex gets the Deny on the top tier 1 tower as well, so... Some less gold going for Meteor Makers, and... I have to say that this kill on the Life Stealer, it was huge in stopping the momentum that the life dealer was gaining sure he didn't have that many levels he's level six now but he was getting so much farm and the light the druid wasn't getting anything oh and now we see a two-man smoke rotation here into the enemy jungle now they're gonna spot out the bear they use some beat as well can they actually get you there's the disruption coming out soul catch on top ace Dark hoof stomp double edge will get the kill in the end and snare not in time but oh there's the sun strike coming out ace actually manages to dodge it there's crit as well mystic player so much damage concussive shot was used and dread should be taking a fall one last arcane ball there is enough mana but oh it got disrupted from the dream coil 
still they can't really go for the counter kills anyway and unicorn will survive or will but be invoker once away oh cold snap and unicorn will go down <laughs> that's actually a dominating streak yep. ended oh. that's a dominating streak going to the invoker so he's really gonna be happy it's too bad the rotations not coming in in time plus of course the sun strike missing that sun strike on the center war up would have made an absolute difference in this fight whatsoever now link we see him farming here already munching through the tower and dread is the only one who can do something against it but level two riptide he's level four i like he's really really low let's compare here the hero levels like he is just yeah level four just like the dazzle and even the supports of meteor makers are so ahead at the moment so it's it's looking bad experience wise and now dread i think he might fall victim to another gank yeah yeah it's with the haste run easy who Hoofed on double H to follow Link, reaches just in case. Not even necessary really, but some extra attack speed makes it faster. Yep. It, Dread's game here is, is dreadful. We have to say it like this. It's it's not even him, but like, I don't know, he's always at the wrong time, the wrong place, I guess. Yeah, he's not having the best game by any means, for sure. In once he hits, that's just the issue with his support Naga Siren. He doesn't do all that much. Sure, the ensnare is nice against Link and all. And well, they this need one, the song. That's well. the problem. I mean, they need at least him on level six. He needs to get that levels up. But now against Link here, Link might actually get even a solo kill because the level no, it's now level two ensnare, so that should secure him through the duration. But now Shachlo. Okay, he spots out Unicorn. Unicorn just dropping this nice offensive ward here in the jungle. But yeah, now the Forge Spirits is gonna do. Yeah, they're gonna do some damage on him. But that's pretty much it. The Forge Spirits are <laughs> just a bane of support heroes. You can't really kill them because they're really tanky, and you <laughs> can't trade hits with them either because of the minus armor and just a potential Sun Strike flying on top of it. You just have to run away from the Forge Spirits. Yep, we have to look at, like really, really fast in the crafts. Like at the moment, Michi Maker is leading with almost 3k experience. Okay, that's less than actually expected. And well, gold-wise, it's just 1k. This is this is hardly worth to mention, to be honest, because like we are, we are almost 30 minutes into the game. It's 4-7, and yep, this game could turn any way, or like in either way. But now, oh my God, they saw Wind X, and like oh, Wind X just noticed it that suddenly everybody is going his direction in. Well, this sentry ward is doing work, you have to say it, plus of course the observer ward, but he's still going in! Oh, there's the stampede coming out, and this might be trouble, Windex goes down, and Dread should be able to escape, but... Okay, I just got baited, this was... Ace played this perfectly, to be honest, he went past the rune spot, and he completely made his face, like, poker faced up, that there was no sentry there, that he had no idea that the dazzle was there, but still, like, I mean, he saw that he was sort of visible. I mean, he could have guessed that because suddenly everybody was just going his direction as soon as he approached the mid. And then he's still going for it. Like, didn't he suspect a sentry there? Maybe it's just me as a caster, like... And Ace uh, was the perfect perfect actor there, man. Poker yeah. faced it up. I guess Ace bait here. Oh, so but he... Link might be in trouble, Yogi. He has the Dream Coil. But Link, he's going for the race card build or at least semi-race card. Drums, face boots. But now going for an armlet. Oh, he's going for Amnet. I thought Sanga Yasha is following now for full race car build, but yeah. I mean, he's getting some harass damage by Yuki. Oh, now they're yeah, they're going on. There's the ensnare. He has the rage TP out. Nothing to stop that. Yeah. They cannot follow, uh, start with the ensnare by the looks of it. That's that's the biggest problem. They have to wait till he's raging and trying to TP. Then the ensnare has to come. That's the biggest problem. So you have to follow him till the rage is fading. Then either the poison touch or, of course, the dream coil. But yeah, this way around... He just By the gets way, away. What do you think of Rice going for a hand of Midas 30 minutes in? Well, Midas gaming is never too late. Oh, Yoki Midas might game. be in trouble, disrupted up as well. Crit is there, and Yoki silenced up, will get taken out as well. A few more right clicks, and Unicorn gets the kill. Link just coming in from the XP. At least Yoki got his blink there just before his death. Yep, it's to be honest, it gets more and more a mirror match like last game. Relax having a decent draft, having decent laning. But getting pickoffs or getting picked off everywhere on the map alone versus Michi Maker just grouping up. And now you're in the mid. 
Oh well, haste rune on there. ace. They have two yeah, and abandoned. There's a sunstrike coming out onto the TP of Rise. He gets co snap up immediately. But the Mystic Fair was enough. There's the Stampede as well. Taking my while. Getting stunned up. Double H was used already, so he's maybe gonna escape Ghost Wall. It's not enough. There's a second sentry coming out as well. That's a 2 for 0. Rice did drop really low, but he was just barely tanky enough. And now Ace has his Blink Dagger finally up on the Centaur. Oh my god, but Unicorn a bit too cocky here, I think. That's a ballsy move. I mean, Disruption would be there in two seconds. So, there oh, actually, the Demonic Perch is coming out first. Yeah, the Hoof Dump will be there as well. Yoki might be in trouble. Double H, actually, they kill him off. And Unicorn still on the run. There's no mana for the Ensnare. Use your Magic Stick, Dreadman. You can do it. But Chalo coming in on the Lone Druid as well. And Unicorn can't really do anything anymore. But yep. still, they kill off the Puck. So, it's a worthwhile trade in the end. Yep, and Link, just not enough. The tower. First damage. Yeah, and Link, you, you just said it. Oh, I'm with the camera on it. Like, he just got that uh, tier 2 tower while all this is happening. So, Meteor Maker is now with a really decent kill lead. 5 to 12, and Relax is just spiraling downwards. I don't know, are they kind of nervous because they soon play against the Lions? Or what is this? I know they I know they can play the Oh, Link but... going for the wraparound. There's the hoof stomp onto the Windex as well. And before Link, I. Oh, Link actually. Nice, that no TP. Buy some time for Link to get the kill. <laughs> <laughs> but no TP. This is also just level 1 Shallow Crave. I mean, the duration is always the same, but you need a TP with you. And there was no disrupt. That's the funny part. There was no disrupt whatsoever. Like, the hoof stump was already out. He could have TP'd without any problem anywhere. Yeah, actually, it might have been really nice. At least a try. But yeah, he had a TP on him as well, so. No. Yes, and he, oh, he's going for the hoof stomp onto Dread. A few right clicks. He was level 6, but no time to activate that Song of the Siren. Oh my god, Link does so much damage with the armlet activated. The co snap is there. Yoki goes in, but immediately silenced by Crit. What a reaction by the Skyra. That could have been a disaster with the silence Reaper. And they go for the stampede. They use the wall already. Windex drop down for the hoof stomp and Charlotte stand up as well, but he's 1.5k HP. Link has to back off. The Weave is aggressively on him. They're going for Yoki though. There's the Mystic Fairy, doesn't do enough, they're on the run now, Link can't fight, he's ensnared up, no infest as well. His defensive disruption is there and Ace wants to go for something, there's the Sun Strike, Link gets taken care of, he kills off the Naga before, but there's the Dream Coil finally, onto two heroes, they catch the third hero as well, Ace wants to get the Hoof Stomp or Double Edge, can't do either and Rise now. With the Iron Shell does some damage, Shallow has to run away as well, there's the Surge. On to Rice, but he doesn't have any mana left whatsoever. The angel is there. Chaos Meteor, the Rice. Is he gonna feed? Oh, crazy. Goes down just before Rice. Rice survives all of this and they get the Lone Druid as well. So Inter much fighting Peters. on the edge. Oh, they do it. Like Rice, just surviving there with 70 HP. Also, no entangles whatsoever. And by the way, uh, the puck missed completely out on his Waning Rift. He was like close to all three of them, but like the Waning Rift didn't hit anyone. This would have been, wait, this would have been level 4 Waning Rift. This fight would have been a team wipe there for Meteor Makers if the Waning Rift hit it. But, yeah, Yoki just missing out on his Waning Rift and this is a mistake you can't do. Yeah, it's n that fight, I thought it actually it's m might be going really good for them because Link couldn't really fight, but will they get the D9 away? Nope. Nope, oh, 16 Hero HP. Siege. <laughs> Hero Siege creep. Yeah, well, that was that was kind of, I don't know, it was a nice team fight by both teams, but as I said, like, the balance was really that, I don't know, the Puck missing out with his spells on three heroes there, that really made the difference. But Relax is still not giving up, there is four... Men smoke coming, Necro Warriors, Fort Spirits, everything is coming, and to be honest, Darkseer might be in trouble. Yeah, then again, he has the level 2 wall, we have the level 4 vacuum, so actually they might turn it around, but oh, he gets caught, he can't go for the vacuum wall, it is silenced up as well, he can't get a single spell off. Oh god, that silence just wrecking him, and they're going for more Dream Coil onto Unicorn, defensive disruption, but the VV is on them, and Link, will he go for the fight, and yes, he will, Windex might be in trouble. The Rage is there and Shallow Grave TP out this time and they used the Song of the Siren Link now. No infest into anybody, he wants to get it but silenced up, defending Blast and they're gonna get Unicorn as well. Three heroes taken out, that's exactly the shift of momentum that they needed. Yep, absolutely, beautifully done by 
uh, me, uh, I was about to say Michi Makers by Relax here. They get three kills and on top of that Lone Druid just yeah, munching through the tower and now man fighting against. Yeah, yeah, Crit is coming as well. The Mystic player is there so much damage. Oh my god. They used the Stampede as well in the end. Yeah, the Stampede was needed there as a slow. So yeah, with the slow on top of you, you can't really do anything. You get full 1000 damage there. Plus minus of course the magical. That's just so much damage. Sure, it takes a crap ton of mana from Crit himself. Yep. But Crit actually has a road of Atos now as well, so they have the slow from that already. Well, let's see. I mean, Darkseer now, he has like the team fight items. They have two arcane boots, they have one Mac. We have to look in the other items as well. Like, they, what else is coming? Of course, they have Urn, they have two Tranquil boots, so there's a lot of healing coming their way. And well, Rune of Atos, that's additional slow, plus, of course, the mecha already mentioned. So, yep, Michi Makers team fight wise, pretty good in shape. We have no mech whatsoever on the other team. Now we see, well, okay, Shachlo now. Oh no, he was just swapping the Hand of Midas on his bear, yeah, but, but still. there's no radiance. <laughs> yep, there's no radiance. Okay, that's interesting. He's going for the Maelstrom, which is, I guess, at this point, a good decision because we are 21 minutes in going for a radiance now. I don't know, but I mean, it's, maybe the Radiance is still not not off the table. I mean, they, he could still go for it. Well, if he's going burn. for one after the Maelstrom, I think that really might be too late, especially as Ace almost has a pipe finished up. He has the Hood of yeah. Defiance plus 1k gold. I but guess, yeah. Other than that, I mean, the Lone Druid getting some extra attack speed and the Entangling Claws against the Life Steer, because Life Steer, in theory, he's actually the only real threat that Meteor Makers are sh sure that's the Darks here with the Vacuum Wall as well. Yep. At but the moment we see Link, by the way, here, eating through a triple stack of Ancients protected by Unicorn. Now Crit is coming the way to relax at the moment with 5 in the mid. But like, look at this Observer Ward. They're standing all directly on top of the Observer Ward. Meteor Makers know exactly what's going on. The exact amount of heroes that are at Relax's disposal. And that's why they don't even need to bother. Like, there's two people here. The the Darkseer is baiting, so if there's a single TP coming, then Ace will just come and blink in. Now, this warding of Michi Makers is just yeah, so much worth it. Now comes the rotations. It is the bear alone. Okay, that's kind of the worst hero that could happen for Ace, because bringing him down is kind of hard. Yeah, he's just so tanky, especially as he has now the casual cloak as well. So, it definitely is hard to bring him down. They do need the life stealers right click for that, or maybe the mystic player like they had before. But, but I think they might go for him now. As his it's SNY coming. finished as well. Yep, I told you, it's gonna be full race card build. Yep, there we go. Sanger, Yasha, the face boots, and the drum. Like, this armlet was just a small intermezzo, but now Ace actually going back. I really thought maybe they start on uh, the Lone Druid, but yeah, Lone Druid now. He's going back, also recalling his bear. And in the mid there's still four, but Jesus Christ, now there's also another Observer Ward, this time coming out from the Radiance. But Meteor Makers knows exactly what they do, what they're up to, so they can farm, or rather, like, Rise here can farm, and of course Link can farm. They have all the time in the world, that's so easy for them at the moment, with the Vision. Yeah, but speaking of Vision, Windex, he picked up HM, hands it to Dread on the Naga Siren, because Dread... I guess, in theory, he's the most likely to survive with the Song of the Siren being on him. But they will finally start counter warding up, so no more Observer Wars that they're standing on S5 when they're trying to gank or anything. Yep, absolutely. Now Link is pushing here towards the tier 2. In the mid, there's still some sort of Mexican standoff, uh, just in case Crit and Unicorn they stick around, but now Relax is choosing to go back. The bear, yeah, the bear finally comes here. They have to defend the towers, of course, that would be would be too much gold influx. And now we have to see with the jam, of course, on the Naga Siren, they have to go around, check out the map, so that Mitra Makers get uh yep, yeah, get their wards dewarded pretty much. They need to have map control here. As you saw in the mid, like the vision was everything. Now I, I think Mitra Makers is gonna go aggressive now. They have the blink up on Rise's Darks here now, so he can stay back and just catching a Naga Illusion. Yep, definitely worth it. I mean, 20 seconds cooldown on the disruption, so it's always worth it to bait it out. They thought maybe this is the Naga just dewarding with the freshly like acquired gem, but now, okay, Mitra Makers, they want to go in Roshan. Of course, they have Vision here plus the Sentry. There's just a Sentry here on the other side, so 
Yeah, I think this is an uncontested Roshan. It doesn't look like Relax is responding whatsoever. There is a scouting. Sunstrike, okay. In the mid we have the Forge Spirits pushing out, but no, they won't contest. So this Roshan is going down slowly, I have to say. Really slowly. They get also quite some damage. But okay, yeah, the I'm wrong. He's popped as well. Oh, right. Blinks in just as the Song of the Siren comes out. This is horrible. If they grab the Roshan now, Link, he's on. He just gets bashed. Uh, oh, this is so much trouble. The pipe gets activated. There's the Mystic player as well into the Yules. Yoki, really nice item pickup. There's the wall vacuum. One to two heroes. Dread still alive somehow. Link has to escape. His solo crit is on a monster kill streak though. They kill Dread, but Link falls. He had the Aegis though, so it will be fine in that regard. But still, not the most ideal of situations. Really nice initiation, but there's the Spirit Bear getting my stun by Link with the open wounds. So 300 gold for Link. Some yep. damage onto Shallow as well, and he has to use the cooldown. He doesn't want to summon it yet because he might get picked off a second time. So, yeah, crazy. He's just TPing out there. Like, to be honest, ah, the Naga Song just a second later, and they could have actually snatched the Aegis, but this way, they didn't have enough damage to bring the Roshan down on their own and pick up the Aegis. So, uh, well, kind of unfortunate. And it, it, it ended up a 2 for 1 raid. Right? If I'm not mistaken. Oh, well, two for two if you consider the Aegis on the Lifestealer. So maybe yeah. not too bad of a fight uh, since you get the Aegis immediately down. So Meteor Makers not having the Aegis advantage yet. Yeah, I, I guess that could be okay. Actually, Shallow up to 3.1k gold already as well on the Lone Raid. So if he really wanted to, he could still pick up the Radiance. And Radiance, if for nothing else anymore, well, he goes no, for the Basher. 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 There we go. But I would have really liked the Radiance because the Dark Share Blink as well as the Center Blink, those are actually the key elements in winning a team fight for Meteor Makers. So if those would be disabled, they would actually have to run in the old-fashioned way. Yep, absolutely. But look in this situation right now, for example, just imagine the uh, the Radiance because then both would have been disabled, like the Plink Dagger on Rise and the Plink Dagger here on the Center Warner. That's why I still like kind of like the the fact of a Radiance. But, well, they're not going for it. Now we see Yule Scepter here on, yep, on the Shadow Demon. And I used this some seconds of non-fighting for showing the crafts. Like, they don't read TPing bottom here, and while well, I say this, 15,000 XP is now going away. For, yep, Meteor Makers and the gold advantage is. Yeah, oh, Link just runs into 000. crazy, crazy open wounds up. Does he have the Ghost Wall? Of course he does, but Rise is there with the vacuum. Will it be enough? No, the Ghost Wall comes out. Finally, there's the Silence as well on to Rise with the Ensnare. He's dropping low. He uses the mech, defensive disruption, but the Stampede coming out. Will it be enough? The wall comes, but there's no vacuum to follow. So that's one easy pick off which Meteor Makers they probably wanted to avoid. Yep, it ended up not just the pickoff, also the wall being baited out. That means, yeah, wall down for 100 seconds, but I don't think that's even too important because Relax at the moment doesn't seem like they're interested in pushing. Why would they? I mean, they have, I think, better late game. They have an Exort Invoker, they have a, a Lone Druid. Puck is doing quite well, and on the other side, you only, like, okay, in gaps, you only have uh, the Lifestealer. And we also have a Naga Siren who could anytime go into more damage if she wanted to. Oh god, they smoke up at the moment, but I seriously hope that Crit will not die. He's 8, 0 and 7 on the Sky Wrath. That would be so much gold going the way of one hero of Relax if they ended that streak. And yep. it's not the tankiest heroes, but there's the Infest Bomb finally gonna come out. Ace is the carrier of the Proud Lifestealer. They wanna go on crazy first. This is your initiation on crazy, I tell you. And now. It's gonna explode. Dark this is coming be a fight. in as well. Oh god. Who will go in first? There's, there's the Stampede coming out. There's a nice vacuum as well, but the Song of Siren immediately. Link wants to munch through the Spirit Bear. And going on to Dread now, he still has his Rage active, but they can't really follow up. Now Creep taking a lot of damage. There's a nice silence as well. Use Scepter onto the Shadow Only when they're going for more Dread. Slow down, Mystic Player Naga Siren goes down. They killed off Windex before, and can they catch Shala as well? They have the Road of Atos cooling down. A nice Ice Wall, but it won't be enough, Link catches them off guard. He's just gonna man fight them. The TPs will be there. Bashes. Shallow goes down. Invoker makes the escape, but they lose three nevertheless. Yep, this was horrible. What a disaster for Relax there. Losing three. Meet your makers. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, they were so indecisive. After the song, like the deafening blast on three, I thought like, oh, maybe, yeah, we got something here. But like, in the end, it, it was just not happening, it just not happening. Too much they farm did, on Meteor Makers. They didn't even use the Dream Coil. Yep. 
nothing was really used there. Like they were so split up somehow because somehow Meteor Makers was directly in the mids and I don't know, two tiers top, like three bottom, one almost immediately going down, like Dread died there then finally to uh, the Mystic Flare of the Skyrath Mage. So this fight, I don't know. I, I think maybe Retreat would have been better because this half as way it just led to nothing. It led to neither kill, just to three deaths, so you might have as well just escaped next time. Yeah, I guess they thought that the vacuum was already used, so they don't have to worry about that combo anymore. But still, just getting outpowered with the items as well as the levels that they have. Yep. Like you said already as well, man. He's also getting super tanky now. I mean, well, he just picked up Reaver. Like, his region is gonna soon skyrocket just by having a heart. Yeah, it, it definitely is, but <laughs> Link picks up an Abyssal Blade now. Suddenly, does over around 340 damage, as well as, of course, a short 2 second stun, or rather 1.4 second stun, but still. Yeah, the Abyssal Blade now on the Lifestealer is also very scary. The funny thing is, like, he's relatively low level, considering, like, I mean, he's level 16, but he already got a full race car build, plus, of course, the Abyssal on top of it, so he can even lock down the bear, that's the funny part. Like, they can bring down the bear if they, for example, would go for some slow siege. I mean, at the moment, uh, Relax is not in a position to go for a slow siege, but eventually they might be, but, like, with the Abyssal Blade and all the slows, etc., it's... Yep, this bear is, is definitely yep, not going to live for very long. Yeah, and actually at the moment, relax, they're pressing the issue. They're going for the tier 2, they've activated the necro level 3. Yep, and they, they saw, there's the infest. Th Will they go in with the stampede, blink, pipe as well? Rise, I think he's gearing up for the blink, ace wants to go in. No, they just let it go. There's the cold snap on ace as well. Will relax go in, there's the pipe activated, link comes out. No targets to choose from though, just going for the spirit bear out of frustration. Even oh, Yoki, he's getting caught out there. Oh, actually, does he oh, make oh, it? Oh, there's away? a dream coin on free. No, <laughs> won't make a difference. A nice chaos meteor defending blast. Still, it's just not enough for them. And guys, wall coming out, stopping right. He gets the wall, but the vacuum already was used. So, actually, meteor makers they're not fighting that much. But Link wants to fight it up. Can he actually do so? He's getting stunned by the pressure of the spirit bear. They're going in ace double edge straight. Will tick down to the arcane bolt, Link. Kills off the Spirit Bear just before the Spirit Bear finishes off Ace. And now Crit, slow on Windex, Windex will fall. Can they catch more though? Oh, wow, Crit. Cleaning up. Oh, the Vato's about to cool down another Ice Wall, nicely used, but you will set around the Spirit Bear. Spirit Bear should go down now, Link. Make sure that Munch is away. There's the Bashes coming in, and Crit kills off Invoker. This Skyrath Mage is doing so much on his own, and now. There is the hoof stump about to come out onto Shala. Shala will fall down as the fifth and last remaining hero for his team. Yep, relax. Just got cleaned up. This fight dragging out so long, but with all these slows, I mean, a lone Skyrath Mage is bringing down, uh, bringing up two slows. The disruption holding the whole, the whole thing in place. The Monic Purge coming out. Like then we have still the opening by, of course, the hoof stump, blink dagger. Like, you can't even retreat from the fight because they eventually will chase you down. Also, you stepped up buying a lot of time. It's... I don't know. But I still like Yoki's initiation there. I mean, he, the problem is he had to go uh, for it because he already summoned his orb and then suddenly he found himself like in midst of all those heroes. But eventually, Meteor Makers is now yep, pushing onto the high ground. There is tier 3 tower already losing 50% HP. At the same time, in mid... Uh, Link and the Skyrath Mage on the tier 2 tower. And Snare is coming out here. Oh, initiation. Okay, Ace goes in. So ballsy. He has it. Well, he's super tanky, but Yule's now on to rise. Nothing will come out of it. And the funny thing is that Ace, he dropped down to about 10% HP or so in the fight. But once they actually reached the tier 3 tower, thanks to the Heart of the Rask and the Tranquil Boots, he was back to full HP. Yeah, how much region is that? Wait, Tranker Boots are not active. Without Tranker Boots, he has 82. That is with the Mechanism 78 without Mechanism Aura. Yeah, plus 12, so around 90. Yeah, around 90 HPS, and that would be about 94, 95 with the Mech Aura somewhere in the vicinity. That's some sick regeneration. <laughs> I mean, he got, what, 3000 HP. That means he needs, what, 30 seconds from 0 to... Yeah, 30 seconds to be full HP from 0 to 3000. Well, yeah, that's pretty sick. <laughs> Indeed it is.
And well, thinking about what Relax could actually do to try to turn the situation around, the Lone Druid actually has started doing a pretty nice job in actually bringing down the heroes with the Bashish, with the Maelstrom procs. Now even a Hyperstone on him, so Assault Cooter's not, not that far off, making his entire team more tanky. You know what the problem was in the last fight? The bear actually got more often stunned than he stunned the lifestealer. Lifestealer with uh, more attack speed, or at least in this case with the rage up, and of course uh, the Sangha, Yasha, etc. Everything playing in there. Like it was really a man fight, or like actually it wasn't a man fight since one of it was a bear, but it was a one-on-one -on -one fight, and the lifestealer against the bear, he just won, healed him up, and when he like when he eventually got low HP with all the other collateral damage, they just responded with the defensive disruption and end of story it was. Yeah, Winter Maker is just coordinating so well, but now, looks like relaxed, they're going all out. But the Spirit Bear, he will pay for its life, the Shallow Grave on the Spirit Bear, my god. Link this bear is going down. This bear is so going down, look at it, it's following and... Will it be enough? They used the Song of the Siren what? just going down. 300 gold oh. to the Scarab Mage. It's so funny to see how the Spirit Bear dies. <laughs> oh, Ace actually goes in with the Infest. They catch Tame My Wild. Will they go for the Abyssal Blade? Of course they will. There's the Vacuum as well, Invoker. No TP for you. Just Bash Lord Link. Gets yeah. the kill. It's so crazy. Eventually goes Stein. Didn't he have a TP? Oh, well, he had yeah, a TP. He started TP, but of course Bash is coming no, out. No, I mean, when the Naga Song came out. That's, that's oh, what yeah. I'm wondering i mean they had the naga song but they didn't tp out so crazy stayed behind sort of and then got caught out by this ace i mean nice reaction there on a deafening class but of course life stealer he doesn't care about your wall he doesn't care about the deafening class when he just hops out of the uh center war and now oh my god link look at link he's impatient he's like come on guys let's finish this we got this easily looking at the crafts well 30k jesus christ 30k xp lead at the moment for Mitchell makers and 15k in gold so at this time in this second game me also relax doesn't have any crazy turtle turtle combination just as they had in game one so yeah meet your makers come on do it make that step onto the high ground i'm pretty sure they will perform well and just get it done to be honest they really think that overall or at least mostly it comes down to the support play in this game and especially the early levels that the supports got the shadow demon once he gets that level 60 demonic purge it's just such a strong tool at your disposal and even the sky with the mystic player he's just been spot on throughout the entire game yeah by and the way we're gonna see sooner a gun scepter on the shadow demon so this is what hell yeah 300 gold away from the uh shadow once, once again, I'm Demon. afraid that by the time the Shadow Demon gets the Aghanims, this game is about to end anyway. <laughs> yeah, we had that last time. We were like, yeah, oh, it's p patch 6.81. We're finally going to see new Aghanim Scepters or new heroes whatsoever. And then it was like, yeah, Aghanim Scepter done. GG call ca coming out. So this time I hope we're going to actually see the Aghanim Scepter a bit in action. It's He's still 270 gold away from the whole thing. But yeah, I don't know. Like, Relax is holding on. By the way, I'm actually wondering because, like, if... I'm not mistaken, they have a game against yeah, Alliance right now. versus Relax, yeah, in the D2CL, but they're still one hanging on to this game. <laughs> yeah, I guess they don't want to give up because even though you have to hurry to your next tournament, it still leaves you with a bad feeling for yourself if you just have to give up. Well, and but to be again, honest, I mean, their chances to beat Meteor Makers in an awesome comeback here is higher than beating Alliance. We have to be bluntly honest there. <laughs> No, so like well, I'm, I guess I'm that's serious. true, but they need a lot more farm on Dread on the Naga for that. Yeah, I guess for that matter, you're absolutely right. And actually, still... crit Ethereal Blade Skywrath. Hello. Oh my God, this is a sick combination. So we are looking at level three. That's 1,400 magical damage. We look at probably Soul Catcher maybe on top of it. That would be plus 50 percent, and an Ethereal Blade that is plus 30, if I'm not mistaken, on the target. It's 40%. 40? Yeah. Ah, 40. Wasn't it, wasn't it 30? Or is it Ghost Scepter that is 30? I'm not too sure, but it should be no, 40 as far as I know. Did it get changed? Why no, is I my... think it has been like that for quite some time. Okay, never mind me then. Like uh, For some reason I have Ghost Scepter Ethereum played, I have 30% somehow in my brain. I don't know why, but now I have 40% there, so I'm gonna remember that number. <laughs> And by oh, the way, Link, again, yeah, pushing here. 
Wanted to talk about Link as well. He has a Heart of Tarrasque now, and Yokido, he has his Sheepstick on the puck, finally. So, some light at the end of the tunnel for them. I guess. And actually, yeah. Crazy, he's not too far off his own sheep. So, the sheeps, they might make the difference, but then again, the Lone Druid, well, he has the AC finish, so they actually might have enough damage with the sheeps active. Yeah, that's now a big Now the Scepter, by the way, on the Shadow Demon. So now the GG goal can't be far away. They tried to fish here with a tornado, but like Exord and Walker, tornado is just not. Long, and the Shadow Demon know. can take on just Two. the lone. Well, <laughs> the lone Druid is like free together with the lone. Oh, you could get smashed up as well. He used the purge though, so the Spirit Bear can't really follow up. Will he use the second one as well? Come on, that go for it. That would be so funny. He uses the Yules. They're going for it. There's the Stampede. There's the purge on the lone Druid himself with the Mystic. Oh. <laughs> Demolished. <laughs> Magical damage. Wow, that is just sick. The, the second demonic purge on you. I think that was was there a soul catcher up on him as well. But no, either way, the soul catcher was used on the spirit bear, I think. Oh, okay. But still, like the ethereal plate plus, of course, mystic flare. Jesus Christ, a lone Link druid gets fixed up. Do they want to go for it? There's the silence as well. Sunstrike did hit, but he has 3.7k HP. He oh my care either. Uh, Plus, look look at the heart regeneration, 88 HPS at the moment. He just doesn't care. There's four yeah, heroes he has of the Yeah, activated as well, which actually drains his HP, but <laughs> he's gaining more than his training. <laughs> well, sure. Link has the ages as well. He can just tank it up for ages because the other lanes are getting pushed in. And Link cold snap up now. He is under the effects of the ensnare. He doesn't care. And there's Rice coming. There's the wall back. He wants to free a pistol blade as well. They blow up Windex. At least the Aegis gets popped right now and Rice dropping low has to use the mech as well. And there's the song with the siren coming out. But Rice, he actually might fall for spirits. Hero for spirits. Crazy gets the kill on Rice, so they're still hanging on. Yeah, but hanging on to what? That's the problem because while they are fighting top there, Ace is getting the tower. Actually there is now a cliff coming out and they go for him. Ace is a piglet, but Link coming in with the boots of travel, going for the spirit pair to begin with. Just those passions, there's the stampede, slow down, there's a nice hoof on double edge as well. Pipe activated by Ace, and even though they didn't get the kills, they didn't lose any either. And it's kind of surprising that they're not following up, I guess. They had to wait for the creep wave just to go reinitiate. Yep, absolutely. There's a random sunstrike just for harass purposes, but it doesn't even hit, so Q3 tower is down. And I don't know, I really have the feeling that Mitra Makers could just go for a frontal attack directly on the high ground, but for some reason, they play around with their food. And they're going, they go aggressive on Ace, nope. They back off and wait. They can't just kill them, the that's the problem. Through. I mean, of course, they get nice initiations. Well, you have a hex, but who's gonna right click this? And now Lifestealer with a double damage rune. Come on. Oh god. If not Ace now. is gonna be a disaster. Windex, run! Run, Dazzle, run! No, they're going for the Spirit Bear instead. They just don't care. Bye bye, Bear. The Mystic Flare was used. Windex dropped so super low. Oh god. <laughs> not even a shotgun, just a Fear Blade. But it's look at the blade. mana. Crit completely zeroed out. 800 mana for the Mystic Flare already. But Crazy has his Sheep Stick now. So they have the sh double Sheep and they want to go in. We look at 40k experience, by the way. Advantage for Mitchum Makers. This oh is just my god, I, I don't think I've ever seen such a big lead. No. And Link such now. a big lead and not finishing the game. Oh, Ace going in. The Hoofstomp actually will miss. And Link used his rage as well. Maybe they have to back off. There's the Ensnare. This might be the. Nope. Infest out. I thought actually this might be what they were waiting for to go in. And they don't have a Spirit Bear for 10 seconds. And there's the Hoofstomp connects onto Invoker. Nice song of the Siren Dread. Saving his teammate for the time being. Will it be enough though? The demonic perch number one was activated. Actually, he doesn't have a second one. There's a sheep on the rise, right? We'll take a fall. No, there's a disruption. What a save, right? Still alive, and they will go for the spirit bear as well as the racks afterwards. The shallow grave comes out, but Ace, nice vacuum wall on the four heroes at the same time. And now Ace double edge gets one kill. Will he go for more? Doesn't look like it, but this is GG. Finally, there comes the GG call. Just about time. 43 minutes. There comes the GG. Perfect game, I'd say. I mean, Michi Makers, 2 0 win for them. Relax, drafting solid, but just not getting their farm through, not getting their pick offs, their strategy, their pushing. It just didn't work out against Michi Makers. So, either way, I have to make it short because we also have to prepare for the next game, which is going to be a 20 CET, right? Yeah, should be. Okay, 20 CET, the next JDL game. Until then, of course, maybe I'll leave the stream even on. If you like what you see, then of course, follow us on Twitch here. 
or on Facebook, Twitter, there you go, always get the, uh, the latest news about what game is coming up. And of course, even more important, just tune in whenever we are there. If you missed the game, you can also visit YouTube, not just for the games we recently streamed, everything we streamed in the past, also funny uh, plays and fails are up there as well. And then till 20 CET, thank you for tuning in, see you soon.